My neighborhood's around oil companies and refineries. And for me, the first thing I think about when I think about all this is what am I breathing, all these chemicals, I get asthma, cancer. Our quality of life, I, in a way, is lower because of this, and we gotta stop it now. The first thing that brings people to our doors is that their children can't breathe. That's usually the number one thing. Every kid in our neighborhood has an asthma inhaler. That, you know, what's going on here? Or, or is, is there something wrong? Why is it that our kids can't, they wake up in the morning and they're, they're, they're struggling to breathe? So that's usually the impetus that brings people in, is that there's some kind of health problem. A great concern to me is the environment and the air quality in which my students and my colleagues and I work and teach. All the different symptoms that we've been experiencing in the last three years, no one can teach, no one can be educated in that type of environment. I think that a great benefit of renewable energy is that it's going to be much cleaner for our communities, much cleaner for the environment, and the air that we breathe will no longer be as, as, as toxic as what we breathe now. So I grew up in Wilmington my entire life, and I'm used to seeing people of color everywhere. And I'm very aware also that many of these people, they don't know the facts. They don't know how, like, about the environmental issues that are going around, you know, they know the basic. They know, you know, basic global warming, but they don't understand the depth of it. In Imperial County, one of the challenges we continue to face is the undesirable impacts of brown energy. Our community has seen its darkest moments as far as the impacts to our, our health. You know, we see it in our children, see it in our families. And, and, and I think we've reached a pivotal point where we really need to find the next alternative. The next alternative is green energy. We've really got a global problem here that needs to be measured and quantified for folks. But if you bring that down to the local community level, you have not just a want, will, and desire to impact the community and the environment in a healthier way, but there's an opportunity for real community benefits, especially in communities that lack those uh, well-paying jobs and all of the benefits that come from private sector kind of investment. Geothermal is, is one component of uh, alternative energy, along with wind, solar, uh, any type of energy that's renewable. The development of geothermal energy is very important to the economy of our local economy of Imperial County because it, it provides jobs. When I hear renewable energy, green energy, it really brings that sense of hope that there is a future here for Imperial County. You know, that there is a future for green energy and there is a future for a green job workforce. All my kids have been brought up around uh, geothermal and they, they have an understanding of what geothermal energy is and, and, and the importance of geothermal energy to this valley. I get a sense of pride from being involved with this industry. Photovoltaic solar systems like this are good, but it's not enough. We need other sources of renewable energy. Solar companies like ours are looking for well-trained individuals. Local officials and local agencies are actually training individuals to get into the sustainable energy industry. So this is a win-win for the community. Uh, we feel that we're riding the green wave right here, the laborers. We're ready to put the young people out there in the photovoltaic industry uh, with rooftop, rooftop arrays, ground mount facilities, solar farms. Uh, we're here to bring this in, in, uh, and make it available to all people of color out there. This green wave, it's going to stretch out of the future. A lot of people think the installation is just one portion, but you've got the maintenance that follows through the, 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 the modules. The solar farms have to be maintained. It's going to be long-term jobs out there. It's going to be good for the environment. We're going to be able to cut back on coal and, and, and some of that usage that's polluting the earth. I believe it, it, it's a wave uh, that's going to bring long-term jobs and cleaner air. The way our system works now is that those with the money have an inordinate amount of power in our political system. So if we want those benefits to go beyond those few people who have enormous amounts of money, we have to, we have to create space for that to happen. That happens when people are organized. That's the lesson of the farm workers movement, that's the lesson of the civil rights movement, that's the lessons of the women's movement, of the labor movement. If we want policy change that benefits us, 
we have to be organized and we have to be smart in our organizing. It's really important that we understand that the grassroots is just as equally as important as the treetops. And we need to understand that the treetops need to be held accountable by the grassroots. And so through this process of this economic recovery and this strategy and the stimulus dollars that are coming, Sacramento needs to do a better job and our legislators need to do a better job of connecting the dots. Welcome to Central Avenue. We're one of Los Angeles Main Street and it's not Wall Street. We are living and experiencing the global meltdown and we have to learn how to live large on less and we have to educate our communities about how to change their practices, green practices, uh, green attitudes, be more conscious about their environment. But even more than that is how to create opportunities, economic opportunities for those that are unemployed and underemployed to be a part of the emerging economy. In order to bring the green economy to Central Avenue and to the Vernon Central community, we need partnerships. We need um, our elected officials to bring stimulus money and federal resources into this neighborhood. We need housing resources, we need uh, workforce development resources, and then we need to partner with LA Trade Tech and other community colleges so that they can train the workforce to green these communities and to improve our houses to be more energy efficient. Using the resources of our state and local government, we can win this game. The solutions do exist. It is just up to our community to get behind it and support green technology, welcome them into our community. But before they could do that, they need to become educated. And education, I believe, is success. We have to invest, we have to educate, and we have to push forward with renewables. I believe that we need to defossilize ourselves and renew ourselves. And as we work hard to protect our vulnerable lands, we need to make sure that we work hard to protect vulnerable people. My goal is to guide my community towards responsible green energy. One of the things I am most proud of is that this is a sustainable business based on sustainable energy. An investment in green energy is an investment in our future.